last night I dreamed. I was an employee in an enormous grocery store and I was standing on the sales floor near the front checkout lanes looking up and admiring a huge end cap display that one of our employees had constructed. And this display was composed entirely of cakes that we were selling. All of the cakes had white frosting on them. And yeah, this thing was huge. It, it looked like a frozen tidal wave of cakes. And I'm looking at it, and a few seconds after I, I'm admiring this thing, I hear my name paged over the intercom by Paul, the owner of the grocery store, who's also one of the owners of the store that I work in in real life. So I quickly head over in the direction of aisle 8, but before I get there, um, a co-worker of mine named Seth, who is a guy that I actually used to work with in real life, stops me and says, hey Josh, come here for a second. I, I just, come here for a second. And I say, okay, what, what do you need, Seth? And, and he says, just have a look. And I look up at a dry erase board um, that I'd written the word bread on above our bread display, and somebody at some point had erased two of the letters, E and A. And uh, I look at Seth and say, yeah, I'll just you know, grab one of the markers and write E and A. I mean, you know how to spell bread. He says, do, but I mean, it's not going to look as good if if I do. And I said, i got to go over to aisle 8 right now. Paul needs me. All right, please, just write in E and A. I'll come back later and I'll touch it up, okay? I'll, all right, I promise, you know. So go on my way. Eventually I get to aisle 8. This place was huge. And I see that Paul's on a stepladder, um, putting merchandise on hooks. And I say, yeah, Paul, what do you need? And uh, Paul looks down at me and he says, I just need you to help my dad out. He's a little bit further down the aisle. He's, he's lifting some really heavy boxes and I just want you to help him out. I look down the aisle and I see Paul's dad for the first time. And his dad looks exactly like him. He doesn't look any older than him. His hair isn't gray. I mean, he looks like his identical twin. That's two dreams. Just two dreams in a row. Let's put up one finger there. It's two dreams in a row that I've had uh, identical twins involved somehow. So hey, we've got some themes working here. But anyways, I helped out Paul's identical twin-looking father. Lifted some boxes for him. Finished my shift. I punched out, and I walked a short distance to a warehouse where my makeup effects business was located. Um, I walked in and there was a documentary film crew waiting for me there. They were going to film a segment about a new compound that I had developed that was supposed to revolutionize the film industry. Um, so I said hello to them all. Um, I told the director that he could begin filming. The director told his cameraman, okay, go ahead and press record. I stood beside a dummy that was covered in ballistics jelly. It looked like a human torso. You know, the kinds of dummies that they would uh, destroy all the time on shows like uh, Deadliest Warrior or Mythbusters. I stood beside that and I told the director, okay, I have developed a material that is as durable as, say, chain mail, but it's still as flexible as silicone. Now, the significance of this is common problem right now in the film industry is that on shows like The Walking Dead or in horror pictures um, where makeup appliances have to be um, fastened to actors to make them look like they're wounded or they're decomposing or whatever, the stunt people that stand in for the actors end up damaging those makeup appliances. Take after take after take, tumbling down steps, getting hit by vehicles, uh, running from explosions, whatever the stunt may be these makeup appliances or latex masks have to be regularly touched up or replaced and that just ends up uh, accounting for a big big chunk of the uh, the budget of the film so I said yeah my material it's gonna look good but it's going to withstand stunt work here and I'm going to demonstrate for you just how how strong this material is so I take one of you know it's like a zombie uh, mask made of my material I don't know what the name of this crap was, but I put it over the head on the dummy that was uh, covered in ballistics jelly, and I picked up a chainsaw that was on the floor, and I pulled the cord on this chainsaw, and uh, 
rev it up a little bit. And I say, now watch that this chainsaw won't even be able to cut through this mask. Filmmakers, they'll only need to buy one mask. It'll last for the duration of the filming project. And this was so embarrassing. Not only did I cut through my my mask with this chainsaw, I mean, I diced the entire ballistics jelly dummy, I mean, just in half. I mean, I, I went through it like uh, like a blowtorch through a snowman. It was ridiculous. My material was so... I, I was mistaken or lying, I don't know, but either way, I looked like a total ass, and I'm just... <laughs> standing there and I turned the chainsaw off and I just felt like the biggest idiot in the world and uh, you could tell the, the documentary film crew they were embarrassed for me too they just didn't say a word uh, the director looked at the ground and then mo motioned for his cameraman to cut and they just quietly walked out and I was alone in my makeup effects business and I'm thinking oh thank goodness I've got a job in that grocery store thank goodness they like me there because now my business is gonna tank there's no way I'm gonna be able to keep this embarrassing incident under wraps and I'm gonna have to work full-time in the lousy grocery store now <laughs>